Hello, I am Akhilesh Ravi and in this video I will be talking about the k nearest neighbors algorithm. So let us say that you have to distinguish an image and say whether there's a lion in it or a tiger in it. Let us say that you have not seen a lion or a tiger before. Now you are shown many lion images and tiger images and for each of them you are told whether it is a lion or a tiger image. Now when you see a new image, you will go back to all the images that you have seen. And you will try comparing these with those and see which one it is closest to or which few images it is closest to. Based on that, you will decide whether it's a lion or a tiger. And now what is KNN? KNN uses a similar approach. You are given some labeled data. To make a prediction about a new data point, you will look at the K nearest samples in the labeled data and then decide. It's like plotting the labeled data on a graph plotting the new data point, looking at the closest few data points and then deciding. So how do we visualize or define a data point? So in a data set, there would be n columns, that is n features. Each sample will have n features and each row is a sample, that is a data point. Now a data point will have n dimensions because it has n features. These features may be numerical values or categorical values. But to plot a data point, we need all of them to be numerical values. Thus, the categorical values have to be converted to numerical values. So how can we do this? When you're given a categorical feature, like does it have a main? The answer would be yes or no. So we could convert this into a zero for a no and a one for a yes. Now let us assume that all the categorical features have been converted to numerical features. Now we will have a new data set or a transformed data set that has data points with n numerical features. So how will we find the distances between these features, these data points? A very commonly used distance metric in general is the Euclidean distance. There are other distances like the city block distance, Chebyshev distance, cosine distance, correlation and even the Minkowski distance. So now this Euclidean distance, how is it calculated? Let us say that you have two data points, xs and xt. So for each of these data points, you will take the difference of each feature or each dimension, square it, and then all these square dis add all these square distances and take the square root. For the city block distance, instead of doing that, you will take the absolute of the difference and add it. So a generalization of this is the Minkowski distance in which you raise the difference to a power of q and then you take the qth root qth root of the sum <coughs> now moving on so you need not worry too much about the mathematics as the concepts that come later are more important in this case now in the euclidean distance let us say that these two are the given points the shortest distance between these two that is the aerial distance or the distance as a crow flies would be the Euclidean distance. Now let us assume that this is a city with all the gray lines as roads and the white places buildings or city blocks. So now the direct path cannot be taken by a human who is going through the roads. Thus the human will have to walk through all the roads. So he or she will have to take the red, blue or yellow path. All these come out to be equal and they are called the Manhattan distance or the city block distance. Now the KNN algorithm. So the simplest form of the KNN algorithm is the one nearest neighbor form. So when a new data point is given, we look at the nearest neighbor, that is the red one, and we say that this has the same prediction as that one. Let us say that the red is lions and the green is tigers. So in this case, this will also be predicted as a lion. What do we do if the prediction has to be a numerical type? For example, if the prediction has to be rainfall on a particular day. So we have rainfall on these particular days and these days and these have been plotted based on the features. Now when we have to look at the rainfall for this, we look at the one closest one and whatever rainfall is there on that day, we'll say that this will also have the same rainfall. In the general algorithm, we look at k nearest neighbors instead of one and predict based on that. So when k is equal to 3, we see that there is one lion close by and two tigers. Thus we'll predict it as a tiger. But when k is 7, we see that there are four lions and three tigers. 
so we'll predict it as a line so we see that it's a lion in case of k equal to 1 and 7 but a tiger in case of k equal to 3 so based on what your k is your predictions may change and based on this your error rates may also change now in case of regression that is when you have to predict a numerical value you look at the k nearest points and you take the mean of all these three values that are predicted and then you say that this will have a predicted value which is the mean of these three or in case of k equal to 7 the mean of that let's try visualizing a k and n so when we look at a one nearest neighbor problem in this entire region this will be the nearest neighbor and in this region this will be the nearest neighbor thus any point here will have the same prediction as this value so this partition is called the voronoi partition now when you combine different uh, cells so if you're trying to classify it into a lion or tiger or in this case red blue and green when you combine all these cells so if all these are blue and you try combining them you ultimately land up with this so this entire region is blue this green and this red so any point here for that point the closest point will be a blue point and the predicted value will be blue similarly in this area will be it will be green and here it will be red so this is a knn map where uh, k is equal to 1 you can see that the boundaries are quite sharp in this case so let us look at the effect of k on the decision boundaries so these are called the decision boundaries for k is equal to 1 the boundaries are quite sharp and very rugged or they are not at all smooth you can also see that this red point may actually be a noisy point or a noisy labeled data and because of that one noisy point this entire region will be predicted as red but as k increases you see that over here it is not at all sensitive to noise so when we have a small k it is quite sensitive to outliers or noise it has a sharp decision boundary and we see this a uh, phenomenon called overfitting that is it fits very correctly based on the training data but it is not able to adapt properly to any new data thus any test data may have quite a few errors in this case but when we go to a large scale this called underfitting it is very generalized and we cannot see the finer patterns for example this region has quite a few greens but this finer pattern is not visible in this because k is equal to 50 which is quite large compared to the number of points over here so in this case an ideal would be 4 uh, a k would be either 5 or 10 so that to some extent uh, the prediction is quite sensitive to patterns but it is not too sensitive and it is not too generalized now in the training data we see that as k increases it does not seem as close to the training data thus the training error will increase so if you see here in this case there are many errors this this region is an error in terms of green if a point comes if we take the same labeled point it will be predicted as red instead of green which is an error but for this there'll be zero error because uh, any point in this region will be a red so if we'll take any training point this i'm talking only about training error right now but when you look at the test error that is actually the more relevant error in this case because after the training period you will only be getting test samples so test error initially decreases and then after that it slowly starts increasing this is because over here there is a case of overfitting and over here it is probably becoming quite stable but now because of underfitting it is starting to increase so any point over here should ideally be green but it will be predicted as red thus the error and over here a point over here would either be uh, should either be blue or green but it will be predicted as red thus the test error will occur but in these two they are looking at the patterns to some extent thus the errors will be low thus you see the low errors are somewhere here now some additional points about knn knn is considered as a lazy algorithm why so so knn puts away the computation for later during the training it has no computation at all but during the testing it has to compute each time a new test point is given this is because when a new test point is given it has to calculate the distance of that test point from each of the labeled data points 
and then based on all that it has to give a prediction thus it has very low training time but for each stress point it has uh, some amount of test uh, time for prediction now a weighted kn in the previous slides we saw that all points in the nearest k region all the nearest k points are considered to have equal importance or equal weight thus now when we are trying to predict something so if one label data point is closer to another uh, to the test point it should ideally have higher a uh, value not ideally but in many cases it should have a higher value which is preferred thus we can give weights to each of the k points that is if a point is closer it will have a higher weight or a higher importance and determine the prediction to a higher extent compared to a point which is farther away among the k points now normalization now when you look at any uh, number of features some features will have very small numbers or very like low numbers and some features will have high numbers for example if you look at the number of legs that an animal has it will be a single digit but if you look at the mass of the animal or the weight i don't want to use weight because we use weight as another terminology here so the mass of the animal it would be a double or triple digit number and sometimes even a four digit number so if a lion's weight is between 150 and 200 kg and a tiger's weight is between 250 and 300 kg you you can see that between the same species itself there can be a variation of 50 but in the number of legs so if you're trying to compare it with a bird say an ostrich an ostrich would be probably 50 to 80 kg i'm not sure of the exact values so the difference is 30 in terms of the weight within the same species but if you look at the difference in the number of legs between an ostrich and a lion the difference is 2 which is much smaller than 30 or 50 but this distance is a significant one this difference but we see that the mass of the ostrich or the lion impacts the distance more thus even if uh, in one point the number of legs is 2 and uh, in another number of legs is 4 but the weights are very close then the distance will be very low but for the for two ostriches both the data points will have two legs but one ostrich may be 50 kg and the other may be 80 kg thus the dis dis difference would be quite high the distance between these two points would be quite high in this case we see that for points between two different species the distance is low may not be low but distance may not be significant because of the number of legs but in case of uh, lion uh, in case of ostriches the dif difference is quite high so we see that the mass this feature is impacting the distance quite a lot to have more uniform impact from all features what we do is feature scaling or normalization we bring all of them to the same level that is we divide it by the maximum or we divide it by the mean or something of that sort so that each of them have a similar effect on the distance Now moving ahead, let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of KNNs. The advantages are that it requires no training period, and because of that, new training data can be added easily and in no time. It is also very simple, simple to implement because you just have to find the distances from each training data point when the test data is given. The disadvantages are. the prediction time becomes too much in certain cases that is when there are too many training points so in that case you will have to find the distance of the new test point for each test point you need to find the distance from a huge number of training data points also when there are a large number of features the, the data point becomes very high dimensional point in this case calculating the distance of one point itself may become computationally intensive thus because of this the prediction time may increase significantly it is also sensitive to noise as we had seen earlier and it also requires appropriate normalization of feature scaling so that certain features do not affect the distance more than certain other features thank you so if you like the video please hit the like button and for more videos please subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications